In this video, I'll present the gibbard satterthwaite theorem without proof. Informally, the theorem asserts that when there are at least three alternatives, the only incentive-compatible social choice that does not ignore all alternatives but two is dictatorship. What does this R mean more formally? We consider a set N of voters, a set M of alternatives. A voter I's preference theta I in O as a total order of alternatives. A voting system or a social choice function is then a function V that goes from O to the power N to M, to the set of alternatives. In other words, it elects an alternative out of a preference profile. The fact that the vote does not ignore all alternatives but two corresponds to saying that the image of V, that is V of O to the power N, which is the set of V of theta for theta in O to the power N, must have a cardinality at least equals to three. The voting is dictatorial if there is a dictatorship K in N, such that for any preference profile theta, we actually have V of theta equals to the top alternative of theta k. And finally, we need to define incentive compatibility, or I'll just write it IC, which is a bit trickier. Incentive compatibility says that no voter I gains by casting a ballot AI in O instead of his preference theta I. More precisely, for any preference profile theta, any voter I and any ballot AI, voter I must prefer what he got by voting theta i rather than a i, i.e. we must have theta i that says that v of theta is better or equal to v of a i and theta minus i. The gibbard satterthwaite theorem, which was first proved by Alan Gibbard in 1973 and then proved again independently by Mark Satterthwaite in 1975, asserts that if the cardinality of V of O to power N is at least three, and if we have IC, then V is actually dictatorship. This is very bad. As a result, any deterministic election with at least three candidates is likely the result of decision-making based on unreliable data, that is, the strategic ballots of the voters, or it can be as well unfair with all candidates but two. In the US election, the latter is definitely the case, given that as soon as two main candidates emerge, no other politician, especially for within the main parties, has incentives to become candidate, as he would thereby be stealing votes from the main candidate he's most similar to, hence favoring the main candidate he most dislikes. Now, the rough model of the US election is first past the post, and but as CGP Gray will likely explain to you, US election is absurdly more complicated than the already stupidly designed first past the post voting system. The gibbard satterthwaite theorem also explains why the Swiss direct democracy, where citizens can write and propose new laws to pass, must be restricted to referendums, that is, decisions only about accepting or rejecting new proposals. Maybe you're okay with most of the law proposal, but there's one paragraph you disagree with. Well, too bad for you. You cannot change it. This is not an alternative in the Swiss direct democracy system because according to the gibbard sasserthwaite theorem, you cannot have this third alternative unless making the voting sensible to strategic voting. In France, presidential elections are held through a two-stage voting system. This is more fair to more candidates, However, as a result, a lot of the presidential debates have to do with tactical voting, and this will probably especially be true for the 2017 presidential election, where the far-right candidate seems to be a favorite to pass through the second round, in which case whoever is the other candidate who gets to the second round will likely become the next president. And the trouble with that is that there are at least three, maybe even four candidates that may get there, which means that voters can strategically drop one of the candidates to promote one in particular. It will be interesting to see how things turn out next May. Finally, in UK, uh, the basic idea is proportional voting. Namely, votes are used to constitute a parliament, and it is then the parliament through strategic political coalitions that will end up electing a prime minister itself. 
Again, UK election is actually not proportional voting, again, because of first past the post. And if you want to know more about this, I highly recommend CGP Grey's videos. But it's interesting to see that the UK is avoiding the election of one representative for all of the citizens through direct voting and has to go through this strategic political coalition system. And this, once again, can be explained by the Gibbard-Satterthwaite impossibility theorem.